Need some help with division with polynomials? Well, that's what I'm going to cover here in this video. So first, what is polynomial? Well, simply put, poly means many and nomial means terms. So you can think about polynomial as meaning many terms. So here's an example of a polynomial and this has three terms in it, right? There's one, two, three terms. So when we talk about division with polynomials, this is going to apply in cases where we have a polynomial that's been given to you as a fraction, like we see right here with this 3x plus 6 divided by 9. So when we say dividing a polynomial, what we're really talking about is simplifying a polynomial that's been given to you as a fraction. And there's one big strategy that is going to apply in every single case of dividing a polynomial. So the strategy is always to simplify the polynomial by dividing the numerator and the denominator by a common term. This common term could be a number, a variable, or a combination of numbers and variables. Now, when I say numerator and denominator, just a quick recap, whenever you see a fraction like this, the top part of the fraction is the numerator, and the bottom part is what we call the denominator. And again, the strategy is just to divide the numerator and the denominator by a common term. So that's the overarching theme with all of these questions. Um, but there's two more strategies here that are very basic, but I want you to look for these strategies and how you can apply them when we look at the examples in just a second here. So the first is that you can, in many cases, try to divide each number by the smallest number in the polynomial. And another strategy that's going to come up in a lot of questions is that if each term has the same variable, you want to try to divide each term by that variable. All right. And if you're not sure what I mean by variable, a variable is just a letter like an X or a Y or something like that. So now let's get right into some practice questions. Okay, so the first example that we want to look at here is simplifying the polynomial 9x minus 6 divided by 3. So go ahead and pause the video, give this one a shot, and then we'll go over how to do it. Okay, so hopefully this one is pretty simple, but if not, that's okay. Don't worry about it. Uh, you'll get there. And the way we're going to get there is we're going to start by looking at the smallest number in the, out of all of the three terms here, right? We've got one, two, three different terms. Smallest number is 3, so we're going to divide each term by 3. So 9 divided by 3 is 3, and of course we're going to bring that x along, so we have 3x. What about 6? 6 divided by 3 is 2, so we bring the minus along, so it's 3x minus 2. And 3 divided by 3 is just 1, and there's no sense in putting the 1 down here. So the answer is actually as simple as just 3x minus 2. All right, time for example two here. And this example is 15x cubed minus 6x divided by 3x. So go ahead and pause the video, try this out, and then we'll go over it. Okay, let's go over this. So here, what I want you to see is that each term has the same variable in it, right? Which is an x. So we can actually divide each term by x. So what's it gonna look like if we do that just to start off the problem here? Well. 15x cubed, if we divide by x, it's that x cubed is going to become x squared. And then if we have 6x, if we divide 6x by x, that just leaves us with 6. Now if we take the 3x and we divide that by x, it just leaves us with 3. So then we can rewrite the problem as 15x squared minus 6 all over 3. Now what we can do is similar to the last question is we can look at the smallest number out of each of our three terms and that number is three. So we can divide each number here by three. So let me do that and I'm gonna write that down here where there's some room. So 15x squared divided by three is gonna be five x squared because 15 divided by three is five. Now six divided by three is two. So that would leave us with 5x squared minus 2 as the answer. Now I'm sure that there's someone out there, maybe you, who when you were doing this on your own, you skipped directly from this 15x cubed minus 6x divided by 3x. You went right to the 5x squared minus 2 and you kind of skipped this intermediate step in the beginning. And that's good. That's actually a more advanced way to do it. 
Okay, the next example is 35x minus 15b divided by 5. So you know the drill by now. Pause the video, try this out, and then we'll go over it. Okay, so let's go over how to do this question. And again, as always, we can look for the smallest number in each of the three terms, which is 5. And so we can divide everything by 5 here. So 35 divided by 5 is 7. We bring that x along for the ride. So that leaves us with 7x. And 15 divided by 5 is 3. And of course, we have to take that b along for the ride. So we've got 7x minus 3b. 5 divided by 5 is just going to be 1. So we don't need to write that. So if you were wondering, how do you deal with the x and the b? Well, you actually don't deal with it at all. You just leave the problem as it is because uh, you have an x and a b. Those are two different variables. So we can't subtract this or anything. So we're just left with 7x minus 3b as our answer. Okay, so the next example you see right here, it's x times x minus 3 plus 5 times x minus 3, all divided by x minus 3. So you know the drill. Again, pause the video, try this out, and then if you get stuck, don't worry, we'll go over how to do it. Okay, so let's go over the question here. So what I want you to see here is that in each of the terms, we have an x minus 3. All right, we have an x minus 3 in each term here. Now, what we can do is we can actually cancel an x minus 3 out of each of the terms. So in the last questions, we were looking at canceling out or dividing everything by a variable or dividing everything by a number, sometimes doing both. And what I want you to see is that we can also take a combination like x minus 3, and if it appears in each term, we can also divide that from each term as well. And that's simply just going to leave us with x plus 5. Okay, the next example is x times x plus 2 plus 9 times x plus 2 all over x plus 2. So go ahead, pause the video, try this out, and then we'll go over how to do it. Okay, so let's go over this question now, and what I want to show you here is a strategy, and it's, it's called splitting, or at least some people call it splitting. And you might see this written in your textbooks, or you might see it written uh, or see it in a course if you're taking a GED prep course. Uh, I personally don't really see any advantage to doing this. I think it's kind of, I just think it kind of takes up extra time and it's not really that helpful for these types of questions. But I'm going to show it to you anyway because you might see it in other places and you should know what it means. So the idea here is that we're just going to kind of split the problem up like this. And the reason that we can do it this way is because we've got this x plus 2 in the denominator, so we can just take this x times x plus 2, write it over uh, x plus 2, and then we can also write a separate fraction over here with 9 times x plus 2, and we just also put that x plus 2 down here in the denominator. All right, so we're just kind of just splitting up the problem like this. And now we can just, again, we see this x times x plus 2 divided by x plus 2. We'll just cancel out the x plus 2s. Over here, we'll also be able to cancel out the x plus 2s. That just leaves us with x plus 9, which is the answer. So again, I mean, I just think this step, it just kind of adds extra time here. But you will see it in a lot of textbooks where they want you to split it up this way and do it, which I think it'd be easier to just... Just look at this question and just cancel out all the x plus 2s and just say, hey, it's x plus 9. And see, that took me like two seconds to do it that way. Um, but I just wanted to show this to you just in case you see it somewhere and you're not sure how to do it or what it means. So the next type of problem here is a little bit trickier. So I want to see if you can figure this out. And if not, again, don't worry about it. You're going to learn something new. And the question is x squared plus 2x minus 3 divided by x minus 1. So go ahead, pause the video, try this out, and then we'll go over it. Okay, hopefully you had a chance to try this. So let's go over this question. So the first thing that I want you to see is that the numerator, which again, that's the top part of the fraction, is a quadratic equation. So before we can move ahead with the problem, we're going to have to take this x squared plus 2x minus 3, and we're going to have to factor it. How do we do that? Well, there's several different ways to approach that, but the way that I approach it is to kind of think about it like this. So in front of the x squared, there's like a little imaginary 1 here, but we don't usually write 1 times x squared, but you can think of there being a 1 out front here. So we're going to take the 1, we're going to multiply it by the negative 3. So what's 1 times negative 3? Well, it's going to just give us negative 3. All right. So now the goal is going to be to think of pairs of numbers that multiply together to give us negative 3, 
but we want to find a pair that's also going to add up to 2, right? The number in front of the x here. So let's think about it. So what are two things that are going to multiply together to give us negative 3? Well, for one example, what about negative 1 and 3? Negative 1 times 3 is going to give us negative 3. But also, if you do 1, if you do negative 1 plus 3, it's like that's basically the same thing as just doing 3 minus 1, which gives us 2. So negative 1 plus 3 just gives us 2. So this is the pair that we're going to want to use here in the question. All right. And as I rewrite this here, you know, if you have any confusion about factoring, uh, it's a skill that's worth reviewing, uh, not just for polynomial division questions, but uh, in general, it's a good skill to know how to do for the whole test. Um, so hopefully this little quick factoring explanation made sense. And again, there's a couple other ways to approach factoring. You don't just have to do it this way, but uh, this is just one way to do it. But the problems are going to become a lot simpler once you do the factoring. All right, so now what we're going to do, since we have our minus 1 and our 3, we're going to rewrite the numerator as x minus 1 times x plus 3, and we keep the x minus 1 down here in the bottom. Now hopefully you can see that we can just cancel out an x minus 1 from the numerator and an x minus 1 from the denominator, and after all that work, we are just going to be left with x plus 3. So if you got x plus 3 as your answer, then good job. This is a little bit harder type of problem. So if you didn't get that question right, now is your chance to redeem yourself. So, and if you did get it right, then good job. Um, let's see if you can get this one right as well. So go ahead, pause the video, try this out, and then as always, we're going to go over it. Okay, so again here we have a quadratic equation in our numerator, and I'm not going to go spend a whole lot of time talking about what a quadratic equation is because I've talked about that in other videos before but basically you have a quadratic equation here you're gonna have to factor it before you can go any further into the question here alright so you do that the way to start it that I recommend would be to take the the first coefficient which is 10 the coefficient is just the fancy sounding word for whatever number happens to be uh, right in front of the x here and in this case it's 10 so you're gonna take that 10 and you're gonna multiply it by the 3 so 10 times 3 is going to give us 30. So now the trick is to find two numbers that are going to multiply together to give us 30, but that will add up to give us negative, thir give us negative 13. And we have to take the minus sign into consideration. So let's think of pairs of numbers that will multiply together to give us 30. Well, 1 is going to be 10 and 3. So 10 and 3, if you multiply them together, you get 30. But if you add 10 and 3, you just get 13, which is not what we want because we want negative 13. So what about negative 10 and negative 3? Well, negative 10 times negative 3, that is going to give us positive 30 because a negative times a negative gives us a positive. But if you do negative 10 plus negative 3, we are going to get negative 13. So this is going to be the pair that we are going to want to stick with here. All right. So now we can rewrite this, and it's a little bit different now because we have, remember this time we have a 10, a 10 out front here. So we're going to write this as 10x minus 10. And 10x minus 3. Now there's something I have on screen here that we can do with this question. Maybe you've seen it already, maybe not. Um, but let me take this x minus 1 and leave that down here. And then if you didn't see it, I'll show you what it is. So we have 10x minus 10. So we can actually just take the 10 out of both of these. So we can divide 10x by 10, and we can just divide 10 by 10. What does that leave us with? Well, x minus 1. Let me cross this out even more. So we're left with, hopefully you can see it there, x minus 1. Down here, we've got an x minus 1. You guessed it, we're going to cancel them out, and that's just going to leave us with 10x minus 3. And after all that work, 10x minus 3 is going to be the answer.